everyone, welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel guys for a full Barca news roundup coming up for you today and we do have, as always, plenty on the agenda with Alex Collado's future discussed in full detail as potentially he's on his way out of the club. We're also going to be talking about the messages that Koeman sent out to several players in yesterday's game against Stuttgart and also, has there been a change and potentially a significant change when it comes to the future of Elash Mariba. It is all coming up, so let's get to it. But I do want to start first of all here guys with a quick update on Oscar Mingetha who several people have been saying throughout pre-season, where is Mingetha? You know, why hasn't he been involved there in the Barca first team? And I can fully understand it if you missed that he's away at the Olympics with the Spanish national team quite honestly, because he hasn't played much while he was there. He did start there in their first group game at the Olympics. It was Spain against Egypt but after 22 minutes of play Mingetha was subbed off with a suspected thigh injury, which basically resulted in him missing the entirety of the group stage there for Spain. But the problems continued for Mingetha because Spain then gave him the all-clear to return in their most recent game there in the knockout stages in the quarterfinal against the Ivory Coast. But once again, it was bad news for Oscar Mingetha. He only lasted 10 minutes before again he had to be subbed off with an injury and Spain believed that it is a direct relapse there, that it's the same thigh problem and once again he finds himself out injured and that for me is really really disappointing there that Spain cleared him to come back quite clearly maybe it was too soon he suffered now a relapse and all that I'm hoping is now that Mingetha can be given the right time to recover to probably now leave the Olympics get back to Barcelona have a few days of rest of course and make sure now that the club are monitoring his recovery because he still remains very much so in Koeman's plans ahead of the new season. However, one young man though who does not look set to feature under Ronald Koeman in the coming season is Alex Collado because I think they're combined with the fact that Yusuf Demir played the full 90 minutes against Stuttgart and obviously the fact as well that Collado stayed on the bench for the entirety of the game. I think already there, alarm bells were ringing. You were thinking there that Collado has got a real problem when it comes to his future at the club and indeed it was confirmed this morning by Barcelona that Collado had left the team's training camp with permission by the club pending a resolution over his future. And Collado has always said that yes, he wants to succeed in the first team at Barca. He's had to wait very, very patiently for his chance. But he's always said that if he's going to stay, he wants to be playing. He wants to have opportunities. He wants to be trusted by the coach. And quite honestly, I don't feel as though Ronald Koeman there has that trust in Collado. And apparently it was actually Alex Collado himself that said to the club, you know what, maybe then... I should go out on loan. Maybe I need to take it upon myself to say, OK, I've got to go away. I've got to play. I've got to prove myself elsewhere rather than stay here and basically stay on the bench without any minutes. And according to multiple reports right now, it is going to be Club Bruges where Alex Collado is going to play for the coming season. That, for me, is an interesting choice. Obviously, they're going out to play his football in the Belgian top flight. Not one of the major leagues, of course. The top five, let's say, in Europe. But at the same time, it is going to give him lots of experience. You'd imagine he'd get plenty of football there at the top level, at the senior level. And also, let's not forget, at Club Bruges, very, very good team in Belgium. He will get Champions League experience as well, which could be very, very important there for his development. And what I do want to make absolutely clear is, while it may seem for Cuyada like a big, big blow to have to go away once again, to have to continue to wait for that opportunity, even though he is 22 years old, this could have been his moment, but it doesn't look like it's going to be. Right now, Barca a very, very optimistic when it comes to the future. Apparently there, there's going to be no buy option in that deal. He's not going to leave the club permanently. And apparently there, the likes of Mattia Armani, Juan Laporta, and indeed Ramon Planas have been really, really happy with his attitude throughout the entire summer. The way that he's gone about not only his game, but also here in deciding upon his future. He's been very amicable. Things have gone down very well. It's been very, very positive between all of them. They see Collado as a future Barca player. And of course, let's not forget that when Collado's loan deal is over when he comes back to the club in the summer of 2022, which he will, what coach will be in charge 
at the club then. Because indeed, for the time being, of course, it is very much Ronald Koeman in charge at Barcelona. And I also do want to make it absolutely clear here that it wasn't only Alex Collado against Stuttgart that he was sending out a message to in leaving him on the bench because there's also been two other real notable absentees there, not only from the starting lineup, but also players there that were not brought on during the second half with both Samuel and Titi and indeed Martin Braithwaite left out there on the bench for the entire game without any minutes whatsoever. And this, for me, is very much a message from the club, certainly as well from Koeman, that both of these players do not have a future at the club. It feels as though right now the time has come to start sending out some really strong messages. Yes, you want to be amicable. Yes, you want to be nice to players. You don't want to go about things in a sort of rude or disrespectful way. But at the same time, let's make it clear here. If you're not in the plans, you're not in the plans. You're not going to get minutes. If you choose to ignore their offers that are coming in for you, whether it be Umtiti, whether it be Braithwaite, you are not going to feature this season. You're not going to get minutes. So the best solution will be to leave the club. And that's what we need to happen in these coming weeks. And speaking indeed about strong messages, speaking indeed there about drastic action when it comes to the club, that brings us nicely on here to the subject of Elash Mariba and exactly what's going on right now in terms of his future. Has there been some sort of change? Could there still be a change in direction this time? Because as we know, over the past few weeks, there's been very regular meetings there between Elash's representatives and the club. And I don't think it's a case here of they're not being willing to sort of negotiate. They're not really willing to sort of understand what the club can do because there have been meetings, there have been several discussions there between the two parties. There does seem to be a bit of a willingness to find an agreement, but until now, of course, nothing has been reached. And while that's been going on, while Elash there may indeed be looking at some offers from elsewhere, interest, of course, as we know from the Premier League, Barca have been very, very clear. They've been very firm in their stance in basically saying, whilst your future is not confirmed, while it's not concrete, that you're going to stay at the club, quite simply, you will not play. We have haven't seen Elash there involved in any preseason games, not for Barca first team or indeed there for Barcelona B, which has left Elash very much out in the cold. However, this is when it gets very interesting indeed, because that's why I say right now, has something changed? Because as you can see right here on the squad list for Barca B's upcoming match is going to be taking place there midweek next week. As you can see, Elash Mariba is now in the squad for Barca B, which is quite a significant change and could see him play, of course, his very first game for Barca again since the very end of last season. Now, reports say right now that no serious breakthrough as of yet has happened. There hasn't been anything drastic that's changed there in the boardroom. Barca are very, very clear on their side that they will not raise their offer. They have made an offer there to Elash's representatives. They feel that offer is something they can afford to do. We are very much acting right now within our means and they will not raise that offer. But it is interesting to see now that he's included at Barca B, because I think what that seems to be is a bit of tension there being diffused by Barcelona. I think up until now, we have been very strict on Elash. We have been very, very firm. And quite honestly, I can agree with that. I can understand why the club are taking that stance. They need to assert here some dominance. They need to take control of the players here that we actually have some power over in terms of their contract situation. But I think right now they're just thinking, OK, we've got those talks going on. We are trying to meet. We're trying to sort of find some compromise between the two parties. We are now going to include you at Barca B level. So still, it's not where he wants to be. Elash Mori doesn't really want to be playing at Barcelona B. He wants to be training with the first team. He wants to be playing with the first team. Still, he's not getting that yet. But as these negotiations go on, it's going to be very interesting to see if he features on Tuesday for Barca B. And if he does, how is he going to play? How is his attitude going to be if he's out there on the field? That will be fascinating. Let's wait and see as this particular saga continues to drag on. So that right there, guys, is the latest news on this Sunday when it comes to Barcelona. Please do let me know your thoughts in the comments down below on everything we have discussed in today's video. And I really do want your thoughts there on the situation with Alex Collado. Do you feel as though it's fair there to send him out on loan? Do you think it's going to be a good move there to go away and prove himself in the Belgian Jupiler League? Or do you feel as though it may be a mistake letting him go? Could he have played a part in our team for the coming season? Let me know all of those opinions down below. And of course, your thoughts on Elash's situation. I will see you next week with plenty of videos are on the way as our pre-season preparations very much continue. I'll see you then, guys. Thanks indeed for watching and for supporting.
But until next time, as always, Vishka, help us. Uh -huh.